So this is Choctafala Creek within Tuskegee National Forest. The boundary between the Piedmont Plateau and the coastal plain is known as the fall line that runs uh, southwest uh, all the way to where we are here. And we're actually standing pretty much on the fall line right now. We're just south of it, so we are on the coastal plain side of things rather than being like actually on the fall line, but we're really close to it. Uh, there are a lot of species that have either subspecies or species boundaries that correspond with the fall line. So it is not only a geologically um, important region, but also biologically. So we're going to catch as many things as we can. If we know what it is, we'll talk about it a little bit. If we don't, we'll try to get a photo and figure out what it is. fish that you need to know for your exam. It is a brown bullhead. So the bullheads have caudal fins that are uniform, but you can see the adipose fin on the back is disconnected from the tail. And then you can tell it's a catfish because of the way it is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you can see the barbels on the face. Those are, oh, it just looked right at me. You can see the barbels. See all those barbels. And those are um, used for uh, chemoreception. So they have really, really good uh, reception for chemicals that are floating around the water, amino acids especially. Um, and so they can detect predators, they can detect uh, bigger catfish, they have hierarchies uh, for their social uh, orders. Um, they can also detect prey items. Uh, so that's one thing unique to catfish is all of those paired barbels. Uh, the other thing is the spinous projections. So if you look at the dorsal fin, you can see that it sticks straight up sometimes at the very front. And that's a spine. And they also have spinous projections on the pectoral fins. And they can use those uh, to deter predators. So when a predator comes, they can jab that spine, they can lock it in place and stab a predator. And most catfish are venomous. So this catfish here can inject a little bit of venom into a predator and that'll bother it. It's not a super venomous catfish. Um, we're gonna look at another one here in a moment that's more venomous, uh, but it, it is irritating. Uh, and they do have some helo, uh, hemolithic uh, properties to, to their venom. So Ictaluridae is the family that catfish are in within the order Siluriformes. And that order has the greatest number of venomous species of all vertebrates. So that includes uh, snakes, that includes other venomous vertebrates. Gila <laughs> monsters. <laughs> yes, other squamates. Um, there's some other fish that are that are venomous too. Um, Duckbill platypus. We'll talk about that. Uh, but most the the most abundant uh, or the the most species that are venomous are within catfish. So that's the brown brown bullhead. You need to know that one. 
Gives you a little bit of a taste what kind of diversity we have in this creek here. This is Choctafala Creek. Uh, this was just one very brief uh, trip with our seine net along this small channel. Literally like five minutes in the water and this is what we came up with. All of these fish, way more than this. These are just some of showing some of the diversity. We let 90% of the fish we caught go. So you can see in here there is a spotted bass, which is right here. Uh, spotted bass, you can tell uh, that it's a bass because it has two dorsal fins. Uh, however, it's showing them right now too. I don't know if you can see it. Yep. But uh, there, there's a very slight um, connection between the two. The front dorsal fin is spinous and the back dorsal fin is uh, flimsy. And sunfish have the same thing, but bass are more elongate. So that's how you can tell them apart. These are the biggest predators in this water along with gar. So most of these fish that are in here, this bass is eating those. Uh, one fish that that bass is not eating is this little tiny thing right here. That's a speckled mad tom. And he might even be bothering some of the fish in here. I'm surprised they're all next to him. That's a venomous fish. Uh, I talked a little bit earlier about how the catfish is the most, uh, div has the most diversity of venomous species. This is one of the more venomous catfish here in North America, um, or in Alabama. It, it's not gonna cause like death, but it is like a wasp sting. So it really bothers things that try to eat it. But their anal fin, or their adipose fin is connected to their caudal fin. So it looks like a long, almost like a tadpole. But they are a catfish, um, and they, when they uh, stab things with their spines, their pectoral or dorsal spines, they're injecting potent venom when they do that. Um, so they're, they're cool. They, they don't get much bigger than that. They're about two inches long. They're known to lay eggs in like soda cans and stuff and really they're very protective of their nests. So the other, the bigger fish here, we have four of them. That's a red horse. These are cool. They're within the group uh, Cypriniformes, uh, which is your carps and minnows. So they have suckers on the bottom of their mouths. So they've got kind of red fins and um, red pectoral fins, red caudal fins, red dorsal fins. Um, this one right here. And they, uh, they're, they're kind of interesting because they, the way they spawn is two males will come up next to a female and basically just start vibrating themselves next to the female and they will eject a bunch of sperm into the water. And so there's this cloud of sperm and if the female's impressed enough with their dance, then she will um, release her eggs and they will fertilize. So it's like a, a tag team. Um, effort for reproductive um, strategy. And then we have a black tail shiner in here. These are probably one of the most abundant uh, species within these river systems of the Choctafala um, Creek system. They've got a very prominent black spot on the tail that gives them their name. The tail is caudally, uh, there's a caudal split in that tail fin. And they're also within the same order as the red horse, Cypriniformes, Cyprinidae. It is the most biodiverse family of fish, freshwater fish in North America, Cyprinidae. That's your minnows. There are tons of minnows, tons of minnow species. These are the very abundant mosquito, western mosquito fish, which is Gambusia affinis. They are within a new order, so we haven't caught these yet. It is the order Cyprinodontiformes. They're really cool because they are a good example of sexual dimorphism. So there's a really large fish in there, that's the female. And then there's a small fish, that is an adult male. And the adult male, the anal fin has been modified, it's elongate, and serves as a basically a copulatory organ for internal fertilization. So it doesn't have any like vasculature or tubes associated with it but the grooves of the anal fin allow the spermatophore to run along those grooves into the female's cloaca. And the way they perform, uh, or the way internal fertilization works in, in these fish, is the male will do a little dance for the female to get her attention, and if she likes the dance, then the female will allow the male to then swim under the female and insert his gonopodium, which is that elongate, uh, anal fin into the fe uh, female's cloaca. The female cloaca has like a, a dark kind of circle around it to assist with that. So basically the male is 
inserting the gonopodium into the target and depositing his uh, spermatophore into the male or into the female's cloaca for internal fertilization to occur. That's very unique because basically all fish within this group, Actinopterygii, have external fertilization where the eggs are fertilized outside of the cloaca. So this is a unique group. The genus is Ethiostoma. And these darters, uh, so this one's cool. It's got some, some red on the dorsal fin, the anterior dorsal fin. It's gonna be hard to see. And the, so darters, there's 73 species of darters in Alabama that we know of. They are the second most diverse family in North America, uh, Percidae. So second only to Ciprinidae. The really cool thing about darters is they're only east of the Rockies. And for being such a diverse group that's only east of the Rockies, that means they were probably recently introduced to North America through Eurasia. The other thing that's really cool about them is there are only 14 species of darters in Europe, whereas there's over 200 known darters in North America. So what happened was they came over to North America and just radiated like crazy. And they inhabit a variety of habitats. They can be in, like this is very still water over here. This is where we caught this darter. But they also like running water with, um, with rock, rocky substrate. Uh, they can also be found in deep rivers. They can be found in swamps. Um, they have a diverse array of life history uh, strategies and reproductive strategies. Some of them bury their eggs. Some of them lay their eggs on like, tree branches. Some of them, the males will like clear out an area under a shelter and try to get a female to come lay her eggs there and then he'll guard the area. So even just for being a recently introduced um, group of fish in North America. Their reproductive strategies um, and their, their color they have, uh, are very diverse. So if you look up, go home, look up darters and look at just the photos of darters, like rainbow darters and um, green-breasted darters and, and look through them. They're, they're really pretty and they have a lot of sexual dimorphism. Um, so this year, I don't know what species it is, but Ethiostoma is probably the genus. Uh, you can tell that it's within the group Percaformes because it has two dorsal fins that are separated from one another. Uh, we'll try to get a good shot of that, but it's really hard to film darters because they like staying on the on the ground, on the uh, the, the substrate. Bundulus olivaceus, the spotted black spotted top minnow, and it is within the order Ciprinodontiformes. They are the killi, well, fundilidae within Ciprinodontophores are the killifish and top minnows. All right, this is a sunfish within the genus Lepimus. Um, you need to know Lepimus cyanellus, which is the green sunfish. So you can see that um, it's got the um, lateral compression. You can see like some green iridescence. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's very deep, it got a deep body. So along with the compression, it's, it's deep dorsal ventrally. Mm -hmm. Um, operculum are, are very pronounced in, in this group of fish along with um, bass so you can see that's the operculum there covering the gill openings and there they, they also have dorsal fin two dorsal fins similar to bass so they're within the same genus or the same family Centrarchidae uh, but Lepimus are different because it's connected almost in, it's almost indistinguishable from the second dorsal fin so there, there's just a very small notch between the spinous dorsal fin and the flimsy dorsal fin. I, I'm sure that's the scientific term for it. Uh, but these spines are, are, are sharp. I mean, for those of you who have fished and caught like bluegill, they hurt. Um, <laughs> ow. And they also have spines uh, on, the, on the anal fins. So three prominent spines on the anal fins that um, you may or may not be able to see right there. So that's Lepimus, your sunfish. Really beautiful fish.